right there. Day one, just got the sunrise pulled up. We've got three groups of bulls that we're going to check out over there on the hillside. Might have to call them across the fence. And nice and light on there. Yeah, it's really nice. It's a Mike's Viking Armament 300 PRC. So it's very lightweight. Makes it nice and easy packing. So we got a 6x6, six six, two 5x5s, five five, so, so far. Lots well, of elk up at the top of this mountain here. Well, it's a little god. Loving the wind. Loving the wind. You have to get in nice and close with these animals today. You can hardly hold the spotting scope still earlier, but it's a nice day for a walk. At least it's a lot warmer than yesterday. Hello guys, first morning on the Mescalero with Chris and Kevin and uh, just passed up on some really nice bulls. They've been here for two days hunting and they've seen up to a hundred bulls a day so they're telling me to hold off. It was really hard to do that but literally the first ten minutes of the first morning. <laughs> We've seen probably 10 or 15 elk. So, we're gonna go try to find some more. Hopefully find a big boy. We're looking for a five point on one side. It has to be a five point on one side, so. What do you see? What a vibration. This is called critical thinking. Oh, so you say. Uh, five. Another elk bedded right next to him. I can't quite see. You see antler on one. It looks smaller. I see a lot of vibrations from the amount of wind blasting me. Alright guys, we're working in on a herd of bulls. There's like eight in the, in the group. But we can't tell if, if, any of them, if any of them are shooters. But there's literally elk everywhere we look. It's just, it's getting pretty late. 
so we don't want to push, pushing in on these elk to get close that way if one of them's a shooter somebody can take a shot but everywhere we look there's elk it's insane Smoke them, dude. <laughs> Get him again, Chris. Yeah, get him again, Chris. I can't see him. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Congrats, dude. Thank you, Leo. I appreciate it, man. Way to put us right on him. The Viking armament strikes again. Yeah, they did the job. Well, guys, like I said, there's like eight bulls, and we didn't know if there's anything legal in there. And there's a big five by six, and uh, we only have two days left. So Chris is like, "I'll draw first blood," and he did. He smoked him, spined him, but it only took one shot. He's down. So yeah, I tell you, it's hard to shoot the six by five when there's a 350 and 6x6 six six right next to him. Yeah. <laughs> Can't beat this though. Yeah. At least it's not blowing 40 miles an hour like it's been all day. No, it's beautiful. Oh shoot, what do we see today? 50, 60 bull. Yup, and there's still elk right here. Right up on top. Oh, this will be a fun pack out. Got the Kafaru packs. Kevin and Leo are going back to get our packs, and uh, we didn't have to hike. We didn't have to hike super far to get to these elk. We glassed them up from the road or from a trail. So they're going back to get our packs, and we're gonna get started cutting and uh, get some pictures before it gets too dark. So bull down. Dude, that's a stud. Oh no. Oh sweet. I thought that was off your bull. Dude, give me some. That's a pretty bull. That's a freaking stud. Dude, he's beautiful. Dude. That's a good bull. Bro. He didn't live like that down there, man. Uh-uh. That's pretty. Holy smokes. Good job, dude. Oh, color. I know. Broke off too, look. Oh, look at this, guys. Can't ask for a better tonight than that, huh? All right, guys, time to clean them up. We're gonna get them gutted and try to drag them out of here, but the trip is not over. We still got a few days left and me and Kevin still have a tag. So y'all stay tuned. We're gonna get this bull taken care of. Go get a good night's rest. And uh, <clears throat> we'll see you guys in the morning. Bigger than he looked through the scope. Actually died, from, died on that shed right there. Really? Yeah. I'll be down. It's a twofer. Yeah. Take this stick. And Breaking in half. I'll try to rope him. Try to 
drag them back. Yeah, and put that rope in the middle. Right here. One guy right there. Like this. Well, guys, we brought all the packs. Kevin and Leo. This is Leo. Uh, he's our guide for the week. Howdy ho there, neighbor. And uh, we, Kevin, they brought our packs up. But I think we're going to try to gut him and drag him out of here. We're not super far, so. Thanks to Leo's driving. He got his truck pretty Yeah. Here we go. There you go. That was easy. What do you think, Kev? We didn't want to gut him yet because we wanted to get pictures of you guys. But figured it only takes us for him to drag him down. It'll take a minute. Heavy. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. Just lift this top cheek up and shove it in there. Thank you, buddy. Cool deal. Alright guys, second morning here on the Mescalero. We already have some big bulls spotted. That's a six point. We're looking for five by fives or five by six. It has to be five on one side. So looking for a good mature. There's another elk behind him and the tree is coming down. Uh, looking for a mature bull. Me and Kevin both have a tag. Chris got his bull yesterday, so. Um, we just gotta look over a bunch of bulls till we find the one that's that's right for us. So Oh man, I wish he was a five by six. Is that the bedded one? Yeah. I thought he was a five. What do you got? I think you'll like this one. Halfway in the shade and halfway out of shade. No, he's in the sun with his butt to us. He's himself? a big five by five. The one by himself? Yes, sir. Telling me he's way up there at the top. I don't care. <laughs> Did he go behind the tree? No, he's still standing there. All right, so we changed areas um, and we found some more elk from the road from pretty ways off, pretty good ways off. Got them in the Maven spotter, and I think there's a, a big five point feeding. The rest of the elk look like they're bedded, but we're moving closer and then hike up and get a closer look and see if we can get on one. So, I gotta get this gate real quick. We're gonna get that other one too. Mike's the best gatekeeper I've ever seen. He gets out fast. What are we doing? Going after some big ones. Hopefully. Big bulls. Got his mountain beard, mountain beard grown out. There should be. We saw at least six bulls, and then there was more up in the pines, uh, just moving around, milling around, bedded. And uh, so we're gonna get up. The elk are acting a little more skittish. Uh, there's quite a few hunters around, but this place is, how many acres is it? 450,000. 450,000 acres, but we've been hunting kind of the same general areas, and um, so we're just taking a little, being a little more cautious, so. We're gonna hike up over this ridge and then get a better look at them and then move move in from there. So fingers crossed there's a good five point in there. Maybe two.
Well, we probably glassed up probably 14 to 16 bulls. None of them are really what we're after, so we're gonna go back down to the truck and <clears throat> go hit a different mountain, eat some lunch. But it's blown about Mach 40 up here, so we gotta go find some calmer stuff. Seeing tons of elk. Well, found a bunch of bulls. Uh, I think we're gonna give them some time, let them feed down tonight, maybe come back and check them out. But right now we're gonna go see if we can't find any more bulls feeding still. They've been feeding till like 11, uh, 11 in the morning. So fingers crossed we find another big one. Gotta have essential snacks out here. Um, this is a three layered, two layered white chocolate iced cake. Uh, Beautiful, creamy middle, nice and crunchy from the cold. Good stuff. We got a can of Vienna sausages to bust into. Those are for later. That's an afternoon snack. So we found another bull, a six by five. He's pretty big, but we're trying to relocate him. We don't know exactly where he went. He may have bedded up, but we have like five or six bulls right here in front of us. Um, so, we're just gonna wait it out a little while and see if we can see him. All right guys, it is our last and final day here on the Mescalero. Um, the sun is just coming up right now. The camera makes it look a lot lighter than it actually is, but uh, me and Kevin, we're still up. Two bulls one day, it's gonna happen. So um, our standard on size has gone down, but still looking for a mature uh, five by and uh, there's an incredible amount of elk here, so I think we can get it done. Leo has faith, and uh, he's put us on probably close to 50 bulls every day. And before I showed up, they were seeing even more. So uh, can't wait to see what today holds. Y'all stay tuned, and uh, let's get after it.
Hit him again. That was a good shot, but hit him again. Another good shot. Another shot. He's down. God. Are you shooting a 6 5 three more? <laughs> that sucker sucked those up, man. Yeah. Well, guys, Chris calls me uh, last day, Mike, for a reason. Got it done. Uh, it's like what the first 20 minutes of the morning. Yeah. Thanks for you. Appreciate it. That was Good awesome. They they're gonna go find Kevin a bull now. There's still bulls up here, but me and Chris are gonna go hike up to mine and uh, start cutting them up and packing them out. And they're gonna go try to find Kevin a bull, and then we'll go meet up with them after we get mine taken care of. So. Mescalero, baby. That's that's awesome. 300 PRC strikes again. Looking at a yucca. Oh, right. Really? Yeah. It's a weird looking yucca. It's white and curved. It's gonna be a tough one to roll over. Yeah. Nice bull. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. All right, guys. We got it done here on the Mescalero. Uh, what an awesome hunt. We had a blast. Saw, I can't even tell you how many elk we saw. Probably more elk than I've ever seen in all of my elk hunting combined in three days. So, um, got some pictures. We're gonna get them cleaned up. We like to give them the last meal. Give them thanks. Thank you, buddy. But, Sweet bull, not uh, not the giant that we were after, but I'm so happy. Um, last day, you can't be super picky, so uh, got an awesome bull, and this is what they're after. Five buys, five by anything. They want to get the fives out of here, so um, the Viking armament paired with the Maven did awesome, and uh, we're about to cut them up and load these Kafaro packs up and get out of here, so we got to get Kevin on a bull. We got uh, all day. It's only like probably like eight maybe yeah let's see what time it is it's 8 30 right now so and i got service so i can text my dad and tell him what happened he's been chomping at the bit asking me what's going on so super happy i get to tell my dad i shot me a big bull but awesome hunt huge thanks to leo chris and kevin for uh helping me out got chris's bull two days ago he was an awesome bull as well um, so let's get to chopping and get out of here. Hey everybody, 
So Mike and Christopher are quartering and packing theirs out. Leo and I hiked on back down. Still had uh, you know one day left, so we brought me a little bit here to the east. We got on a nice bull. Just made a shot across this valley. We'll hike up there shortly. He's down and uh, got her done the last day. <clears throat> A little bit of a hike to get up here. There he is. <sighs> Beautiful bull. Oh, I'm incredibly grateful. All right, guys, we got our. New Kafaru game bags. I'm super excited to use these. I've never had reusable game bags, but got my Shrade knife and uh, I'm gonna get after it. Nice unpressured elk meat. Doesn't get any better than this right here. He's off of the meat and good too. Okay. They're so fat. He's got a weird look. He's been chewing on him. I don't know what that's from. I think he's a little injury. Mature bull. That, th that skin out there is super thick. We got them all cleaned up. These Kafaru packs are sick. Uh, good thing we don't have like five miles to hike to pack out of here, but uh, we're gonna load our packs up. Probably gonna do it in two trips. So I'll see you guys at the bottom and then we're gonna go. We don't have any service around here, so we're gonna try to meet up with Kevin and Leo and uh, see if we can't get Kevin to bull down if he had not even got one. The past three seasons, I've been using the Cutthroat by Kafaru, and uh, this year, me, Chris, and Kevin are all running the Hoodlum. I think it's one of the more popular packs at Kafaru, but these packs are incredible. They literally fit to your size. So you give them your waist size, your inseam, how much you weigh, um, and how tall you are, and they match it up to your body size. So like my pack is different than Kevin's, and Chris's pack is different than ours. So. Um, they fit perfectly and they feel great on the back. You can put a lot of weight. We got hind quarter and a front quarter on Chris's pack. One, two, three straps. In. I'm gonna get my pack loaded up as well. We're gonna try to do this. We're gonna try to do them in one trip. We just gotta go down. We don't have to go up. So um, if we can just get everything loaded on our packs and down to the bottom, we'll be sitting pretty good. All right, boys. Hind quarter, front quarter, head, gun, camera gear, marsupes, <laughs> mavens, what else? Kevin and Leo just showed Trade up. Trade knives. Trade knives, we got that. So what did you think of your first bag out of the hoodlum? For that much weight, it's freaking awesome. Let's grab that board real quick. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Oh, you want me to stay up? No. That's a lot of weight, and I think it's dispersed really good. It goes over the top. Well guys, we thought we were going to have to get on a bull that they spotted that 
bedded. Kevin got it done. Now we gotta go pack him out. We didn't get a, didn't get it on video, but let's go check him out. We got two bulls down last day before 10 o'clock in the morning. That's awesome. Look at those fronts. Heck yeah, dude. Before Kevin, 10 o'clock. Kevin's going to be uh, last day Kevin. Last day Kevin. <laughs> well, guys, we are loaded up, headed out from the Mescalero. It was one of the best elk hunts I've ever been on by far. Chris and Kevin got their big bulls loaded and uh, you got a long drive ahead of you. So, got tons of amazing meat. Gonna go home and uh, use all the made with meat processing equipment and we're gonna get all this stuff in there. We're gonna get, that scared me. <laughs> we're gonna get all this stuff uh, processed up and then I'll see you guys in the kitchen. All right, guys, we are back from our elk hunt and we are in the kitchen today. Like I said, we are gonna do some processing here for you guys. Uh, big thanks and shout out to Made With Meat. They gave me all the equipment necessary to make all kinds of crazy stuff with this meat. Uh, but today we're gonna be doing sausage. I know sausage is super intimidating to make and even think about for a lot of people, but you come home, you got all your elk meat, you cut it up and you have it sitting in your freezer and you don't know what to do with it. So we're gonna show you the easy way to make sausage. It's super fast, simple, easy, and delicious. All right, guys, so I'm gonna show you uh, how we do our sausage. Uh, we're doing a small batch today, a uh, 15 pound batch. Uh, the seasoning that we're using today is from parnatmeats.com. I'll leave that linked in the description box. Y'all can go check them out. Uh, they have all kinds of different seasonings, uh, sausage mixes, summer sausage, stuff like that. Today, we're gonna be making my favorite sausage, and that's Italian sausage. So in your Italian sausage, you got a lot of fennel seeds, coriander, um, salt, pepper, sugar, stuff like that. I really don't know what's all in it, but parnatmeats.com has the goods and that's all you need. So right here, I have it weighed out for 15 pounds of meat uh, and I'm cutting our elk with a third of pork trim. So this is um, five pounds of pork trim and 10 pounds of elk meat. This is just uh, hams, uh, different cuts of meat off the elk that aren't your back strapping or tenderloin, stuff that you'd want to make in a sausage. Uh, and if you notice, it's still halfway frozen. Our meat is super, super cold. So you really want to make sure you're working with cold meat at all times. It's already hot here in Texas. Um, so thankfully we're inside. We can do this and keep everything cool as we work. Um, but first things first, you want to take your seasoning and you want to mix this up before we put it in the grinder. I think it gives it a, a better grind and a better mix whenever you put your seasonings uh, in here and mix it up before the grind. So we got our seasoning all mixed in. I'm just putting it back in here to make things a little easier and we're gonna run it through the grinder. I'm gonna show you here in a second, but this grinder from Made With Meat is awesome. It's a dual grinder. So I'm not having to run my meat through the grinder two different times to get the consistency I'm looking for. Your, your sausage 
consistency. You want I like a, a bigger, biteier bite of my sausage than a, a real fine like hot dog. You don't want that. I don't want that. So we are going to run this through. So we'll grab our grinder. So like I mentioned, this is a super easy process. The made with meat equipment just makes it that much more easy. But if you don't have this equipment, you got a hand grinder at home, you may have to run it through twice, maybe three times, a little bit more work, but it's still a super easy and simple process. So like I said, this is a one horsepower dual grinder. So you have two different size plates in here, a coarse and then a fine. So you, your meat gets double ground and uh, therefore I don't have to run it through twice. So another cool feature about this made with meat grinder, I got a pedal down here so uh, I can control when it's on and off. I'm gonna go ahead and load our hopper up. Uh, and you wanna put a few pieces down in there. You don't wanna run this thing dry. I'm gonna make sure it's got stuff moving through it. So we're gonna start grinding and I'm just gonna keep feeding the hopper until we get through this 15 pounds. It only takes about two or three minutes with this guy. All right guys, so like I said, that only took about uh, three, four minutes to get 15 pounds through here. Um, our meat is still nice and chilled. We are going to get this grinder off the table and then we're gonna move the stuffer over here. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do this sausage. So we're already halfway through making sausage and we're about 10 minutes in uh, for the whole process. So uh, the biggest time consumption is really cutting your meat up. You wanna do about two inch chunks uh, you can fill this hopper up and, and feed it off of that, or you can just do it like I was doing and take it out of your other pan and put it straight in there. So as you know, meat sticks to just about everything once it dries. So super simple to clean this guy, put everything into hot soapy water in the, in the uh, sink. Just tap the pedal, make sure you keep your hands away and your kids, because this will chop their, their little fingers off. So there's one of the plates, that's our small grind plate. And then our second plate in here. Let's see if it'll come out for us. I'm gonna unplug it because I'm gonna put my hand in there. So there's your blade that comes out of there. And then this little guy right here. There's your, that's what feeds the meat in there. And then there's your big, uh, your big plate. So all this goes into hot soapy water. Get all that cleaned up. Unscrew this guy right here. This pulls out into the soapy water. And that's it. This is your machine. This is your uh, your motor right here. So this is going on the ground and we're gonna get into stuffing. All right guys, I got Papa Mullet here with me today. He's gonna help out and steal half of my sausage and take it home and put it in his fridge. So uh, he's gonna help me out today. But super simple, this is the 15 pound stuffer by Made With Meat. Uh, our meat you can see is pretty tacky. You can make a snowball out of it, meatball out of it really quick. Uh, so we're gonna add one bottle of water to start. We may have to add two bottles. Uh, and this is just to help the stuffing process. So um, it can get stuck in the horn of the stuffer and it makes it that much more difficult to get it stuffed. So I'm gonna mix this one bottle of water around in this meat and uh, all of that will evaporate out whenever you're cooking it. So don't worry, if you put too much, you can kind of, um, push the meat all down and then get that water out if you have way too much. But I think one bottle is gonna be just about right. My hands are freezing, our meat is still really cold. Uh, that's key whenever you're working with this stuff. You spend all this money and uh, most of y'all live for this, go out and elk hunt and you come home with all this meat, the last thing you wanna do is let it go bad. So make sure your meat's cold. If you need to stop and stick it in the fridge or in the freezer to cool it back down, make sure you do that. So 
Our consistency is pretty good. I can rub my hands, it's not super tacky. And we're just gonna pack this stuffer. We should be able to get it all in one go because this is a 15 pound stuffer. Make sure you pack it pretty good so you don't have a bunch of air pockets in your sausage. So we are getting super close now. Got the Gorilla Grill outside fired up, the smoker. We're gonna smoke some sausages here for you guys here in just a little bit, but we are cruising through it. Got a little extra meat over here. Um, but we're gonna get stuff, we're gonna get to stuffing. Uh, our table is super clean. We cleaned it right before we started this. So my dad's gonna sit here and crank. And these are our hog casings. Natural hog casings is uh, what we use. You can get it at your local butcher shop. Um, just wanna make sure they come really, really salted. Uh, so I like to let mine sit in water for about 45 minutes to an hour before we start uh, stuffing them to get all that extra salt off of them. So we're gonna feed this onto our horn. And uh, sometimes you get one that's about 20 yards long and you gotta cut it. We're gonna stuff this out right here on the table into a big circle. And then we are going to pinch it off and make actual links. So get down here to the end, I'm gonna tie it off. And we're gonna go super slow, make sure if you give any of this as gifts or anything, you wanna make sure it looks good. So we got a bleeder valve right here. My dad's gonna uh, crank that down. Once we get a little bit of pressure, we'll bleed uh, some of that off. See, we got the air right here. All right, so we got our sausage coming out of the end. You wanna get all that air out. And then you wanna tie your casing up. And now he's just gonna start slowly cranking on it. We're gonna get a nice, even consistency in our sausage. And we're gonna start making it into a big circle. starts getting tight just press that little button so you can see the consistency in the sausage uh, perfect fat to meat ratio um, and it's and it's a nice textured bite it's not some like I was saying it's not like a hot dog all right so we made it to the end got a little excess back it out dad and we'll Put this meat back in there and add whatever is left over to it. So we'll add that in there and then we're gonna tie uh, where that intestine ended, we're gonna tie that off. And I'm gonna show you how to make your links. There's all kinds of fancy machines out there, the easy linker, stuff like that, but it's super simple. So we got our round. You can take this right here like it is, set that on your smoker and smoke it and then cut your links out. You can twist your links in or you can hang it and make big ring sausage. Uh, but today we're gonna make links. So you just take your sausage, pinch it, twist one way, come down, pinch it, and twist the other way. Just like that. And we're gonna go through this whole sausage ring and make our links. So we'll split all this up. Try your best not to uh, not to break your casing. It is a natural casing, so it can have some weak spots in it. Um, but just be gentle with it. And a few times of doing this, and you'll get the hang of it, and you'll be giving everybody sausage for Christmas and birthdays. So there's multiple ways to do this. Like I said, you can even take this. You have all your links cut and you can hang that in your smoker and smoke it like that and then cut your links off. But our easiest method, the easiest way we found to do it is just to take a cutting board and a knife and start cutting your links. So it will stay together right there where you uh, twisted it off. You're just gonna cut your link and then you're left with link sausage and it's ready for vacuum seal or smoker. So you can take it to the smoker and then vacuum seal them after you smoke them. 
or you can just vacuum seal them just like this and put it in your freezer. I put them I put them straight into the freezer like this after I vacuum seal them. Um, it just takes a lot of time to smoke all these and it's just as good to me uh, to eat. It's just as good to me getting a fresh sausage out of the freezer and cooking it how you want it. If you don't want to smoke sausage, uh, you can put it in the cast iron and just pan fry your sausage. So, so you pan fry it on a grill, you can you, you can do anything you want with this. This is just meat. So anything that you can imagine, we put this in spaghetti, cut it up into little chunks, put it in lasagna. Um, anything you do with a Italian sausage, you can do with this right here. So and don't cut yourself. So we're gonna finish making the rest of this sausage and then we're gonna show you how to vacuum seal it using the Made With Meat Chamber Vacuum. And we're gonna go outside to the Gorilla Grills and we're gonna eat. This is probably the nicest piece of equipment I've ever gotten when it comes to preserving your meat. This is the Meet Your Maker Chamber Vacuum Sealer. I've always had the ones you can get at Walmart or order on Amazon and uh, they always seem to leak. So. Going from that to this is an insane game changer. What we do is take these vacuum seal bags, you just throw it right in here, make sure the seal, make sure your bag gets on that seal bar and then you shut it and it does the rest of the work for you. There's different settings on the chamber vacuum. You don't wanna go too hard of pressure cause it'll just squirt all the meat out of your sausages. Uh, so you want to do it at like 25 to 30 seconds and I have my seal time at three seconds So uh, we're gonna see how this works. We got the other meat smoking on the grill I can't wait to try it. So we're gonna put all this meat that we vacuum seal in the freezer and uh, Enjoy what's on the grill here in a minute So this will open up by itself. You don't have to touch anything It'll pop open just like that and You have vacuum sealed Sausage just like that and you just repeat that process Throw another bag in there And that's it All right guys, we got the sausage ready for the smoker. We got the Gorilla Mammoth. This is a giant smoker You can do all kinds of smoked sausage or you can just use it as a grill. So I got it turned up to 350 we're just going to cook these real quick uh, we're not going to do a low and slow smoke on them we're just going to cook them uh, and eat and make a nice brat it's italian brat so open this guy up over here this sucker is brand new so we're just going to lay these in here hear the sizzle Well, as you can see, guys, I uh, didn't bring a, a heat glove out here, so kind of just threw them on, but we're going to let those go for a little while, uh, let them get a good, nice temp all the way around, and then we're going to put them on a bun with some sauerkraut and mustard and see how they taste. All right guys, it's been a total of like maybe an hour if you put it all together, everything that we've done here, and it's finally time to eat and give you all a rating on how good this Italian sausage is that we made today. So, got some sauerkraut, our sausage is done off the Gorilla Smoker, and we got some nice looking buns here. So I'm gonna take a bun, we're gonna take us a link of Italian sausage, we're gonna take a little bit of Dijon mustard, couple gallops of that and then we're gonna go in and finish it off with some sauerkraut just like that now I'm about to burn my mouth off but it's probably about to juice all over the floor but let's get a rating 1 to 10 um, 
elk Italian sausage. Mmm. I gotta go in for a second. Flavors are protruding through this sausage right here, boys. So once again, pernatmeats.com. This Italian seasoning mix is the best I've ever had. And I'm gonna give this a rating of 9.7 out of 10 for a brat, I call it a brat, but it's an Italian seasoned sausage. Um, that right there is delicious. We'll go in for one more. 